It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. on my side, for the blood has been applied. Praise the Lord. The blood, that's why I like Andre Crouch's song, reaches to the highest mountain, reaches to the lowest valley. Come on, anybody, y'all ever been in a situation you say, I don't know, but Jesus said, I'm here, I'm reaching it. We were sitting at a table with some of our friends a few weeks ago, and one of them, well, we were kind of quoting some scripture. So one of them said, uh, Hebrews 13, there where it says, Jesus said, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. That's pretty strong words. I've heard some church members say that before, and I know that don't mean a lot. But Jesus said, <laughs> I'm a preacher's kid, please forgive me. I have, I have a few wounds that are being healed. But anyway, so. Let's go over that one more time. Jesus said, I will never, ever, under any circumstances, never forsake you, abandon you, and leave you without appropriate help and well-timed help. I will never, ever leave you. Come on, God said, my covenant, I will not break and I will not alter the thing that has come out of my mouth. I got a covenant with God. Woo! He is faithful, hallelujah. Some of y'all think you got, I got lots of friends. On Facebook, I got friends. Listen, Jesus said, I will never unfriend you. So, Jesus. All right, let's try this again. I will never leave you, abandon you, forsake you. Come on, we used to sing that song. I'm sure Lynette knows the song. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There is no other friend as kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we're sitting at the table. So they brought up that scripture and they said, he said, I'll never leave you, never forsake you. So you can boldly say, Come on, let's follow it up now. So you can boldly say, what you're going to say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man could do unto me. Come on, let's try that again. The Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man can do unto me. He said, I will never leave you. We're quoting that scripture and I said, you know what that sounds like. That sounds like blood covenant talk. All right, let's try that again. Come on, because blood covenant talk produces blood confidence, blood consciousness. Woo! Amen? All right, where are we at now? Go to Hebrews chapter 10. Y'all found that yet? And let's read this part here because I just can't miss this part here. Wow. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. I'm going to read kind of fast. And it says this, for by one offering he hath perfected forever those who are sanctified. Everybody say he did it once. He did it once. For of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say thank God for the Holy Ghost. This is verse 15, Hebrews 10, 15. 
For the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us for after that he had said before, this is the covenant. This is the covenant. This is the covenant. Come on, this is the covenant. Come on, that means to cut till blow, blood flows. Cut till blood flows. Come on, and exchange of names. Come on, exchange of garments, exchange of weapons. You got a blood covenant here. Come on, think about it. When, when God made the covenant with Abraham, Genesis chapter 15, man, Abraham cut those animals in two and, the, and, and fire came down. He said, it's a, it is a, a, an awesome thing. And it says, and God made a covenant with Abraham. Somebody said, when Abraham came out of that, he could have looked in the blood and saw the footprints of God walking through the middle of that blood. Woo! Come on, when Mephibosheth came out of Lodibar. Come on, every time I see a dead dog, I say, there's Mephibosheth. Listen, when you see, when Mephibosheth came out of Lodibar, <laughs> come on, I'm a dead dog. Man, they brought him before David, and David said, I'm going to give you all the land of your father. I'm going to give you all the stuff you eat at my house for the rest of your life. Come on, because there was a covenant that was cut before you were born that you did not know about, but I want you to know that David said, is there anybody left of the house of Saul and Jonathan that I may show them kindness? Come on, God's got some kindness coming to you. Come on, some loving kindness coming to your house. His mercy, his loving kindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The covenant. Come on, every time you take communion, you're saying, I got a covenant with God. Amen. I've told you this before, but Dylan's over there, my, all my grandkids over there. Dylan, stand up real quickly. See him over there on the chair. Hold him up. Where's he at? Hold him up. He went to sleep. All right, see that, Dylan? Come on, for three years, Doc said, we don't know if he's going to live. He's going to die. Look like he's going to die, but he's alive today. Just played his first basketball tournament team. Come on, he's alive. You say, what happened? We just had a little covenant meal together. Come on, we got the blood out. We got the cracker out. Come on, we got the grape juice out. And we said, devil, you're going to have to take your hand off our family. We have a covenant with God. I said, we have a covenant with God. Go ahead and shout about this. I got a covenant with God. Our brother-in-law, Snow Peabody's in Arizona, the head of the team challenge there for years and years. Homes all over Arizona, helping people addicted to drugs and stuff, giving them the gospel. And he was in the hospital for the last few weeks uh, with COVID. And they said, well, just don't look like good. Don't look like he's going to come out of it. Boy, the family got together. Come on, we got the crackers out. We got the great views out. Said, devil, you lying dog. Come on, we do show the Lord's death until he comes again because of the blood of the everlasting covenant. You got to take your hands off of him. Next day, he's up breathing. They took the oxygen off of him. He said, huh? What happened to him? I got a covenant with the almighty God through the blood. You're doing slinging blood everywhere. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Come on, some of you, your mama, your daddy, your grandparents, come on, they ain't on this covenant. And before you were born, come on, they said, I plead the blood over my children and my grandchildren. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ha ha. They came out with joy. Come on. Come on, when the rapture takes place. Huh, we ain't coming out broke, baby. They said, that's some rich people living down there. Come on, we coming out here with some money. We got silver and gold. Come on, we got some land. Amen. That preacher with that jet disappeared. They went to heaven. Oh, you can have the jet now. Now, ha, ha, ha. Come on, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. All right, I got to get back over here. Praise the Lord. 
Now, let's finish reading this. Are you ready? Verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. Look at this. I will put my law into their heart. In their minds will I write them. And their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. Some of y'all to just get happy just over that thing. Huh? Come on, you couldn't even say I ought to get healed because I'm the best Christian in the church because you're the worst Christian, but you can still get healed by the mercy of God. I never could get healed that way. I wouldn't go and say, Lord, you know I'm the best Christian in the church. The Lord said, that's a lie. So, <laughs> so, so I had to come by the mercy of God. I, I'm flinging blood everywhere, Lord. I mean, all the church women are praying for me. Every, every time they had a revival, all the church women are praying for me. They're like, Lord, let the pastor's son get saved again. <laughs> I've been saved many times. I don't know if that's theologically right, but it helped me. All right, verse 18, where remission of these is, there's no more. Everybody say remission. Look at verse 19. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Somebody say, how did you get in there? By the blood, blood, that's how I got in. By a new and living way which he consecrated for us through the veil that is to say his flesh and having a high priest over the house of God, let us draw near. Come on in. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Come on, let's try that again. In full assurance of faith. That means my faith has hit 100%. Full assurance of faith. What way? Having my heart sprinkled from an evil conscience. Wow, think about that. My heart sprinkled. From an evil conscience. Imagine the sprinkling that they did in the Old Testament. And Andrew Murray said it this way. He said, the sprinkling of the blood is the highest act of worship. But here he says, in the New Testament, the sprinkling of the blood reaches your heart and cleanses you from an evil conscience. Other translations say, cleanses you from guilt, a guilty conscience. Another translation says, cleanses you from sin consciousness. Another translation says, cleanses you from any unworthy feeling. Come on, the devil said, you don't deserve that. You say, yeah, but Jesus paid for it. I said, but Jesus paid for it. Now, the blood reaches into your heart, cleanses you from a guilty conscience, and then throw this in, and he washes your body with pure water. Even your body is happy. Come on now. What do you call that? I call that healing water, pure water, washing every cell of your body from the top of your head. In his presence right now, you experience his glory and his goodness. All right, here's the last one. I'm going to give you this last one here right now. Praise the Lord. Verse 23, you ready for this one? Let us hold fast. Come on, same thing Paul says in Hebrews 4.14. Same thing Hebrews 3.1. Same thing Hebrews 13.15. Same thing 1 Timothy 6, verse 12. So don't act like it's a minor thing. Big thing. Yeah. Dad Hagen in that one set on Hold Fast Your Confession, he said, it's the most important, significant, and valuable teachings in the Word of God. He said, I could teach on Hold Fast Your Confession every day for two months and never just do the same sermon. Huh. I thought, well, I might could do a day. <laughs> I must need to learn something about that. (laughs) So he says, hold fast the confession of your faith without wavering because he is faithful to that promise. Woo, hallelujah. Our job, hold fast, hold tight. Don't turn loose of it. Hold.
hold on. And it means to say the same thing. Keep agreeing with God. Hold your position. One of my favorite studies in the Civil War, and I like to look at some of it, is the battle at Gettysburg. What happened at Gettysburg? Because that battle determined who won the war. Because if, if, if the North would have lost Gettysburg, the South, Lee would have marched right into Washington, D.C. and captured Abraham Lincoln. So it's a fight. So, man, they're fighting, trying to, trying to uh, protect the Union. Come on. Setting the slavery, we're getting rid of slavery, setting the slaves free. Boy, they're fighting. And uh, one of the greatest pictures is what happened in, in Gettysburg, and it happened on a little hill called Little Round Top. And Little Round Top, man, there's a, I can't tell you all about it because I like all of it, you know. Little Round Top, there's a guy up there top, a colonel named Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain on the 20th of Maine, and they put him at the top of Little Round Top. And he had less than 400 soldiers. And they told him, you must maintain this position at all cost. That means either you're going to hold this position or we're going to find you dead. You cannot retreat. Because if you lose this position, then the south would have gone right up against the flanks of the north and would have destroyed the northern army. So he said, you must maintain this position at all cost. So he's got less than 400 men. And here's this little speech. Uh, one guy was quoting his speech. And so uh, uh, Joshua Chamberlain, he actually got the Medal of Honor for this stand on Little Round Top. And Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain talking to his men, they know the odds are way against them. And he talked to his men. And he said, for seldom in the history of war and the history of this nation have these few men, men like us, been called upon for such a time like this. And you cannot retreat. We will not retreat. And we will hold this position. Man, they had a little rock wall and wave after wave of the South. Come on, the, the Confederates came up that hill. Man, they held them off until they ran out of bullets. Three wave, wasn't they? And he's still there. And then here they come again. They said, they said to him, they said, well, we're out of bullets. He said, fix your bayonets. Come on. Here the south comes up again, fourth wave. And so Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain said, well, what we're going to do is we're going to attack. <laughs> so here comes the south up the hill. And so they got their bayonets fixed. And so then he devised another plan, like a swinging door on the side. So here comes the south men. They know they got it. And they come to, and they attacked, came down that hill, and the south quit, gave up, turned over their guns, and they captured all the prisoners with no bullets. Wounded twice. Got the Medal of Honor. Later on became the governor of Maine. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain. I got a picture of him in my office. Because I've been on that hill. All right, let's try it again. I said, I've been on that hill. When I run out of bullets, what are we going to do? Charge. Are y'all still here? Come on, because we will maintain this position at all costs. And Paul said, you hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering because God is faithful. Yeah. Woo! And Dad Hagen said, even if failure is walking in front of you, come on, you may see failure on every side. And he said, but you hold on to your confession. Jesus is my Lord. I'm redeemed by the blood. I have a blood covenant with God. Come on, I'm washing his blood. I'm holding this position at all cost. In the morning, in the evening. Come on, hold fast to your confession. Your faith in his blood. His blood alone. Woo! I said, his blood alone, his blood alone, his blood alone, his blood alone, his blood alone. Come on.
come on, you overcome Satan, the accuser, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. What you going to say about that? You going to agree with God or you going to agree with your feelings? Agree with your circumstances? Woo, hold fast. Don't turn loose of it. Come on, keep saying what God says about you. Come on, there's a fight on right now. That little hill won Gettysburg. But now historians look back and say, that little hill changed the nation. Preserved the union. Didn't just win the battle, won the whole war. Ha, 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 ha. Stand up on your feet and give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Come on, I said, we're going to win this battle. We're going to take our position. Amen. In Christ. Hallelujah. Everybody say this. God is on my side. For the blood has been applied. Every need shall be supplied. Nothing shall be denied. So I enter into rest. I know I'm blessed. I have passed the test. I will get God's best. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood. Come on now, shout about it like God's bringing you out with silver and gold. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Do you want to live an overcoming life? Do you want to have more confidence in your prayer life? The blood of Jesus causes us to overcome in every situation, and it gives us great boldness to come to the Father. In his new four CD series, The Blood Covenant, Pastor Mark Hankins teaches us how we have a better covenant based upon better promises. Our covenant is secured by the precious blood of Jesus. God made a covenant with every believer on the cross, and we no longer have to stand at a distance from God, but can come boldly into His presence by the blood of Jesus. Along with this new CD set, you will get the book, The Bloodline of a Champion. Pastor Mark Hankins explains the power of the blood of Jesus. This book has a brand new chapter about his grandson, Dylan, and how he overcame leukemia and a bone marrow transplant. Faith in the blood of Jesus can help us live in the reality of our redemption, which gives real solutions to real people for real problems. By faith, we are a part of a new bloodline, the bloodline of a champion. Order this special package today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Our vision is for believers to catch the spirit of faith, learn who they are in Christ, and be strengthened by the move of the Holy Spirit. For your gift of any amount, you will receive the book, The Bloodline of a Champion, and the four CD set, The Blood Covenant. Please call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Faith in the blood, plus nothing, minus nothing, is all you need to enjoy God's best blessings. For the enjoyment of this blessedness, nothing is necessary except faith in the blood. The blood alone has done everything. That is one of my favorite quotes from this book, Bloodline of a Champion. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We're honored to have you and we trust that you were blessed by the message that you received. Our offer today is this book, The Bloodline of a Champion. We want this book to get into your hands. And because of that, we want you to have it for your gift of any amount. You just cover the cost of shipping and we will get it to you. You can go to markhankins.org or you can call the number on the screen. Thank you so much for joining us today and we want you to be blessed. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Mark and Trina have taken the gospel of Christ and the word of faith to many nations for over 50 years with this mandate. Their desire is to train and equip believers in the U.S. and around the world with the in Christ message, the spirit of faith and the move of the Holy Spirit. They do this primarily at leadership conferences, 
church services, and Bible school. When leaders are impacted, they are able to take the same message and anointing back to their churches and ministries in remote areas. Many of these countries they have gone to multiple times and continue to build on the work they are doing. Because of this, another major part of the ministry is the translation and distribution of our books. Dad Hagen said, the greatest distribution of the gospel in the end times will be the printed page. The amazing thing is our books go places we may never go and reach people that we may never know. Right now, we have over 40 books that have been translated in many different languages. We are believing for our books to be translated into 100 different languages. Another major assignment of Mark Hankins Ministries is our daily television program. The television program has expanded the reach of the word tremendously. Every day, we are able to come into people's homes and teach the word to people of all ages, denominations, and walks of life. We are amazed at the testimonies we receive from people who watch the television program and have been healed, set free, and set on fire with the Word. The influence of the television program continues to grow, and the program now has the potential to reach over 80 million homes with the life-changing Word of God. We recently completed the construction of our new conference center at our ministry headquarters. We like to see this facility as a distribution center for the gospel. We host many multiple day conferences every year and it houses our new television studio. The studio allows us to pipe out the word to more people than ever before. Now is not the time to slow down, but we believe there is an acceleration of the assignment to reach more people, more languages, and more nations with the gospel of Jesus. We want to thank our faithful World Missions partners. Your gifts, large and small, all join together and make a huge impact for the kingdom of God, not only here in the U.S., but also around the world. If you could see all the faces of people reached and how their lives are transformed, you would see how their spirits are encouraged and set on fire. Each individual represents a unique story of redemption and restoration in the Lord Jesus Christ a testament to the unfailing love of our Heavenly Father. Together, let us continue to use every avenue possible to take the life-changing gospel and word of faith to as many people and to as many nations. Remember, together we can, together we will. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina, read our daily devotional, and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Thank you for watching.